Okay, so uh, the last talk before the break. Uh, this is uh, from Torsten Redder uh, from Lexigen, and he'll be talking about spiking RNA variants, external transcript isoform controls uh, for RNA sequencing. So thanks, Torsten. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Torsten Reda. I'm the CSO um, from Lexogen. Company was founded in 2007. Our uh, base is in Vienna, Austria. Since 2014, we have a subsidiary also here in the United States. 50% of our staff is working in research and development. Uh, the entire team is dedicated to RNA. This enabled us uh, to build up the entire workflow for RNA sequencing and uh, provide you uh, with a comprehensive portfolio of RNA sequencing tools, which take you up right from the beginning of the isolation of RNA from cells and tissues up to the data evaluation pipeline, except the sequencing itself. So the products of Lexogen are platform open. Uh, you see on the right side that the RNA sequencing workflow has sort of many multiple steps uh, to control for all the variabilities. Uh, we developed a system, SERFs, which control for the variabilities, and this is what I want to introduce you by answering three questions. Why are valid controls necessary in RNA sequencing experiments? What are the SERFs and how they are used? If I would ask the question, uh, do you use spike in controls in RNA experiments, every one of you would say, yes, of course. I have never seen an electrophoresis without a marker, without a ladder, because I want to compare samples in an experiment. I want to compare the experiments to each other. The answer for just changing the question slightly, do you use spike in controls in RNA-seq experiments, only half uh, regular using controls, and if you look at the pu uh, publications, uh, they make hardly any use of the controls which are available up to date. And the experiments, I'm not talking about electrophoresis, uh, RNA-seq experiments are quite expensive. Uh, not only the pressure samples themselves, but the library prep, the sequencing, and don't forget the bioinformatics pipeline afterwards, time, effort, and costs here add up to a substantial amount. Therefore, it is important that the samples are compared not only in the experiments, but also between the experiments. Or put it in other words, you have to know the technical variability in your experiments, in the samples between the experiments, before asking any question about the biological variance. If we look at such a workflow, as I have shown before, the uh, number of variabilities are horrendous. Yeah? It starts with the operator. Even if you have an automated system, there are certain drifts. And if we go down to the bottom line, the bioinformatics pipeline, and sort of unroll it, this is not just a package. Uh, uh, most of you uh, will using sort of different programs, and you have to use quite a number of different programs uh, because you start with trimming, bias correction, error correction, you end with anomalization, quantification, differential expression calculations. All these give you a pathway of more than 15 million different possibilities just to use them, and this is more than 50 million because each of these program packages has then also a number of vari uh, variables you can sort of anopsy you can tune to optimize the experiment, uh, to optimize your data evaluation pipeline. The programs not always are well documented, are continuously improving. This gives you only an idea, and this is only the last part, which influences the variability of your, of your RNA-seq experiment. In contrast to this, to use spike ins is extremely easy. All what you have to do, a small amount goes into your sample. What you gain is a small amount of your results belong to the controls, which allow you in the first place to do the comparison to the expected values, to the known ground truth, to derive a value for the accuracy of your experiment and to compare using the controls, the samples in the experiment to it themselves, which gives you a measure for the precision uh, what you achieved or the, com uh, the repeatability in your experiment, which allows you then in stage three to compare the endogenous RNAs of your experiments themselves. 
the controls lock the technical parameters of your entire workflow, be it a regular pipeline validation or the sample measurements themselves. Until last year, there was only sort of one type of controls available, ERCCs, single isoform sequences, which made it a little bit difficult because this is not what transcriptome analysis is all about. The isoform form resolution was not given. This influences measures for the accuracy and precision. This is what we solved with the serves. Uh, uh, not only you get the measures for the accuracy, precision, but all subsequent data analysis uh, are now sort of on a different level when using transcript isoform sequences as controls. What are they? Uh, seven artificial genes. Uh, each of those genes has between six and 18 different variants. 69 in vitro transcripts altogether. The length varies between 190 and 2,500 base pairs. They all have a constant long poly A tail. Uh, the GC content varies between 30 and 50 percent. And everything we know about the complexity which is embedded in the transcriptome, for example, uh, the percentage of the canonical exon intron junctions plus uh, the uh, known exceptions are built in. I give you one example. Our serfs are modeled the human gene structure. Serf 1, KKL5. You see in the top the gray uh, exon structure of these annotated gene. Uh, this is rebuilt in Surf 1. We added additional features, in this case, uh, overlapping gene region and uh, antisense transcripts. All this built in times seven in the seven uh, genes you have. This allowed us to mimic the entire complex transcriptome complexity in a nutshell. The sequences are non-random, but they have no homology whatsoever with any known sequences, so they're compatible to any organism and you can use it for. Uh, the design is not easy, but really hard is the making of uh, such, such standards as controls. I'm quite proud that uh, we at Lexogen uh, produced a pipeline which ensures the highest purity and for the transcript variants important integrity. Only full length transcript variants make it into the stock solutions, which we then uh, mix in a tightly controlled mixing scheme to produce our different mixes. Our standard uh, mix set, uh, what we sell, contains three different mixtures. My favorite one, first one, E0. All concentrations are equal. So it allows you for the easiest possible evaluation of the data. But we have also different uh, mixtures in this set, uh, which are spread in the concentration ratios within a um, mixture and between to derive uh, values for your precision in calculating differential expression. So all the mixes have always all transcript variants in. How to apply, or there, I could sort of give you now sort of numbers and formulas. Uh, I want to do it uh, just by explaining and give you a vision of uh, two examples. Introduce a sample set, uh, which is like the SOP uh, from the FDA, which was used to produce a reference sample set, uh, which was explored in the ABF and SecUC study. The only difference, we have now surf spike ins on top of it the first experiment. Uh, everything is remained the same, samples, library preparation, TrueSec, uh, the platform mode data analysis, as far as I can tell that it is the same. The only obvious difference is, is a different lab and a different machine. So one data set was uh, sequenced on a high seq and the other one was on the next seq. Uh, the two uh, coverages, samples, are now in a spotlight here, only serve three uh, in the mix E0, the one lab shown in green, the other one in gray. What you expect for the forward and reverse is in blue and in red. Uh, this is your sort of expected uh, or known ground truth. 
what you see is that these coverages you obtain, yes, are similarish. In certain exons, they are nearly identical. The first sign, the second arrow, there are areas which are completely different. So what you believe to see as a different common pattern here yeah, is uh, not the case. And this influences then also some very really sort of significant telling uh, areas uh, you see right in the middle, yeah, there's this additional exon in the superposition or the structure, so the step you see in both data sets. Uh, but the extent is quite different, which is then sort of substantiated in the bottom line example uh, for the short intron. Both uh, experiments provide very identical measures, 1.1 to the expected in the brackets blue number of one. Yeah, they are identical, but for the long intron, uh, the gray uh, experiment gave sort of a twice the count rate for these telling reads, and this is not sort of a sort of an, uh, random noise uh, in the Poisson distribution. No, we have here on the X and the Y scale uh, 10,000 reads, so this is a well covered uh, region of uh, the experiment and what I want to emphasize. This is not something about your controls, this is just a spotlight what shows you how the rest of your 20,000 discovered uh, genes uh, will look like. Uh, so if the serves enable you to have a spotlight inspection at seven defined loci, uh, allow you to calculate coefficient of deviation comparing telling reads. And if you now hope that eventually your pipeline will sort out all the mess and it will average out, no, it does not. Um, Altogether, the results are not, not too bad. Yeah, we look here again on E0 only. Ideal, they should, for each of the uh, experiments, uh, line up on the red line. They don't, uh, they don't even align on the diagonal, which then would give you a value for the repeatability in these two data sets. Um, what we sort of just looked at is on the left, third of the graph, the serve three. So this gives you only sort of an idea just from one spike in how your data evolve. However, you have now the possibility to derive uh, measures for the accuracy and precision. And I take you to a second example, which is sort of ad absurdum because everything is identical, even the data set. The only thing I uh, very here is the data analysis pipeline. I don't take you through these 50 million, but I sort of have just chosen four. And I take you though into just one example, what you have seen in the graph before. With three mixes, you can condense it. I condensed the information here into a box correlation plot, which shows you all the data for all 69 and all three different mixes and the uh, calculated uh, differential expression between them. Overall, again, uh, the data are not bad. Yeah. So the mean median, uh, the circle and the bold bar in black are very close to where the expected values lie. But you have a small amount of obvious outliers which would be discussed as, yeah, there are differential expressions and you could write a paper about it. But no, this is just the technical noise in the experiment. Uh, all together, it gives you sort of an idea that you can condense the accuracy precision information in a global context based on the controls into your entire experiment. Uh, the last slide um, looks a little bit boring, but uh, just go down to the bottom left. Remember the experiment I presented? Uh, this is the same data set. There is no difference at all. So everything you see as a counted uh, differential expression are artifacts, so false positives. Based on this, uh, with these four comparisons we did, you can do six comparisons altogether between the experiments. I just picked the best and the worst agreement. The best agreement in green still has a technical error of uh, more than 5%. You can extrapolate it to your real experiment, as I've just put into numbers, what you typically look at, 2%, 10% differentially expressed in your experiment. You can calculate or extrapolate your error rate uh, to these experiments, and it directly converts in the time, effort, and costs you have to take for searching 
evaluating those leads. And this is what uh, the direct outcome is by using the serves, and you can do quite a lot more. What I want to summarize is here, the important bit is the correlation uh, that in this uh, nutshell complexity of only 69, we sort of build in the complexity which really mimics uh, the complexity of the entire experiment. What you can use it for, spike invariance controls, allow you to validate RNA sequencing quantification pipelines. They allow you to control individual experiments. And if it's good or bad, you search for other data sets you can compare yours best to. So this allows you to find and then research comparable experiments and all this on a transcript level. Uh, serves are platform and sample independent. If you have any further questions, uh, please visit Lexogin in our suite or visit us on our website, lexogin.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.